Yo, Jerome, what's up, bro? Good, good. How are you doing? Chilling, man. Chilling. Thank you so much for uh, following my content and interacting and engaging. Thank you for being a part of the 333 tribe. So I just yeah. want to connect with you, man. Let me see what's on your mind. What's on your heart? Well, I, I, well uh, to give you a, bit, a little bit of background, I'm, I'm a photographer and videographer in here in Whittier, California. So, I mean, I've been doing this for five years professionally. So it's all I've been doing for the past five years, full time, all in and everything. I'm actually at my studio right here. I turned my garage into a studio. So I have that workspace to just focus on whatever I need to get done. But uh, yeah, man, I'm just trying to just try to grow as a person, as, 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 a, as a business owner, I would say. I'm just trying to get some feedback from that. Sweet. So what specifically, first of all, I just want to say, man, some of the greatest companies in history were started in a garage. Yeah. Including <laughs> Apple, right? Yeah. So just so you know, I started in my parents' basement, you know, 18 years ago, grew up in a small town in Jersey. Nobody around me was really entrepreneurial. I grew up with being told I had to go to college in order to get a degree in order for me to make it in the world. And I'll never forget getting my first laptop, hustling in that basement. And everybody thought I was crazy when I was going all in on myself, dropped out of college to become an entrepreneur. Everyone thought I was just going to be this failure. Mm -hmm. And it was the best decision I ever made. Bro. Entrepreneurship just took me down this path of self-discovery. And um, I never look back. It, it, it's been not been easy to overcome a lot of failures, but uh, it's just been amazing, man. So, so it's yeah. been cool because I would tell you, document your journey. That would be what I would say to you first and foremost is document your journey because if there's one thing i wish i did back then mm -hmm. document more of me hustling in my parents basement when basically i had nothing i had to build everything from the ground up you know and, and the fact that you built that workspace in your garage is unique and yeah use that content one day to tell your story about where it all began right yeah. so that's first and foremost document don't get caught into the over analysis paralysis of comparing yourself to everybody on you know, mm -hmm. online that has the dope 10,000 square foot office. I think it's really cool that you can show people where you're at, you know? So yeah. that's for a second of all, bro. It's, it's really about, you know, it's about mindset. Yeah. You know, and ultimately, as long as you are every single day setting yourself up to win by yeah. implementing a routine, by implementing your rituals, by, you know, reading and consuming the content that's going to inspire you and teach you something every single day, like I do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's positioning yourself to, to win. I like to think of it like sports, right? There's pregame, game time, and postgame. Yeah. Pregame is like the night before. What are you doing the night before to get off your phone, to write your goals, to, to prepare yourself to get good rest? Mm -hmm. And then what's and then pregame is also like waking up early, making that bed. You know what I'm saying? Like meditating, praying, getting some exercise in, reading, journaling your thoughts out. You know, letting go of any those any any thoughts that are no longer serving you. Just what that morning pregame routine is for you to get energized and get ready for the day. And then you got your game time, so it's time blocking. I would mm -hmm. tell you, learn time management. Learn how to manage and create time so that you become a master of time. I think that's one of the greatest things I wish I learned earlier was like how to how to be productive. You know what I mean? Because a lot of entrepreneurs in the world are busy. But it doesn't mean that they're actually productive, right? Yeah. So figure out how you're managing your time, how you're time blocking, how you're getting into deep work, how you're creating flow. It looks like the office you created in your garage allows you to get into flow. It's creative, right? Yeah. So it's really getting clear on where where should you be spending your time and mm -hmm. like what specifically, like what's your highest and best use? Like what are you great at doing within your company? Maybe you're the visionary, maybe you're good at editing and doing the photography. Yeah. Where where are you doing those like little tasks? Maybe to yeah. get leads or social media, or it. email, like all the stuff that is taking up time, but you're not great at doing. Yeah. It's not the highest and best use of your time. And Got then it. delegate that and start to build a team. You know, they mm -hmm. basically say a leader's judged by how great of a team he has or she has around them. So yeah. start to build out that, that 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 team around you to support you. Got it. Um, you know, because that, that's that's a game changer. I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have my team. So that's just a couple of things I want to throw at you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. I actually, like, I've been on my own for the, I would say, the past four years. Until this year, I actually started, me and my buddy, my, my, my friends, we started another production team. Now it's us three. 
So now that that now that there's us three of us within the production team, we're able to build better quality video and uh, work out there. And like what you were saying, that I completely agree that a lot of things that when I was on my own, I couldn't do by myself. So now having that team, it definitely helped me and us all together to grow together and, and put better uh, content out there for our clients as well. Fire. That's what's up. Yeah. Now, I completely agree. I do see the difference. And then uh, we actually have a gig today, that today later on today, all together. So, yeah, man, I definitely I, I agree with, you, with, uh, with, with what you said. And uh, So figure out how to get the best like how to how to get the best out of your team right so the fact that you're already thinking like that and you have a team is phenomenal yeah but what you got to do is you got to make sure that they are aligned to to the mission make sure they're yeah. clear on the mission make sure they find purpose in what they're doing make sure you you know i like to think of myself as like a point guard or like a quarterback think of it like you're the point guard of the team or the quarterback right like you yeah. got to put them in the best position to win understand their skills understand where they're where they are great and then put them in that position and pass them the ball where you know they're gonna score where you know they're gonna thrive right and Got get it. to know them deeply get to know their goals get to know what are their dreams and yeah. how do their dreams and goals align to what you're building right and how if this is going to be a way for them to be able to activate their dreams and where they're going to be able to learn and grow and that you're invested in them you're invested in their growth right by introducing them to thought leaders by and helping them to get new courses that they can take or bringing speakers to them or get doing a dope little meetup, taking them out for pizza, taking them out for, you know, to hang out and chill and get to know each other and build like build deep relationships. So those are, those are all just like really, really, really important. Um, what else, what else, what else is on your mind? Uh, really that and and also i i tapped it into like other like small uh, businesses like for example like i started making custom canvases and started selling them yeah i also tapped into a, a little a small like a uh, photo booth business just to, just to create a little bit more yeah. more for myself but um but it all revolves around photography and video so i guess yeah. my question is do you think i should continue that or just completely focus on like more onto my photography and just keep keep that as my niche i would tell you like do what you absolutely love and gives you the most energy got it one and two create the solutions to what your customers problems are so a lot of times i've made decisions in my entrepreneurial career doing what i want and what i think <laughs> is best and sometimes you know th th that's usually when like i, I get an idea like get sparked but ultimately you got to go, what is the market saying they need? Right. Yeah. So like, listen to your customers, conversate with them, communicate with them, ask them what they want and mm -hmm. look at the data, see what people are spending the most money on. I see, I, I've invested in a lot of fashion companies. They start designing all these dope, crazy clothes, but none of them make money. And then they make the most money on doing the basic tees. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, get I clear on like what actually is going to drive the revenue that's actually gonna you know what I'm saying that your customers really need and that they love get clear on all of that and um and 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 always innovate man i would tell you always test like always test new things like always learn like i always say if you're not making mistakes you're not moving forward yeah so, like continue to test the testing booth out but like look and see is it is it actually profitable do people enjoy it do they are they using it and don't be so attached if it's not working Mm -hmm. uh, like always look at like don't look at things and judge things by like what's right or wrong or good and good or bad tell your team like you love ideas you love visions but it's all about what works and what doesn't work and just look at the data ask your customers and just and, and make decisions based on that okay and yeah i would tell you that no matter what you do bro no matter what you do two things that you need to always remember is you got to be a storyteller have your company tell stories through your products, whether it's mm -hmm. the photography, the booth, the canvas, the art canvases, make yeah. your company, because if, if you're not building an in-house media company with whatever your product is, this goes for anyone who's on here. If mm -hmm. you're not telling stories and being, being a media company through the, your products and service, you're gonna get left behind. So, so make sure that you're telling stories, make sure you're creating content, you're putting it out there to build value and build relationships and connection and trust with your audience and create experiences make sure that like you have whenever people work with you mm -hmm. it's experiential 
because pe- that's what that's what our generation wants. We want we mm-hmm. want it to be experiential. We want to know that like it's gonna go above and beyond just just the picture. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a story to it and there's an experience when working with you. When I yeah. have someone who that I hire and they really gave give me an unbelievable experience, whether it's like I go to their event or 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 I hire someone to work with me and they and they're like they show up early, they freaking you know, they, they go above and beyond and they just they, they I can tell it it's an amazing experience. Then yeah. that's when a hundred percent like I, I hire them again. I continue to work with them or or I go back to the same company, the same brand because mm-hmm. I, I believe they, they create an experience. I believe in their values and what they stand for, right? And I look the fact that they're always creating omnipresence with their content. So dude, you gotta be doing all of those things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I I completely agree, and it's something I I I think I already feel like I'm somewhat doing already, but again, there's always room to get better from it. So I'm yeah. also learned that as well. Cool. Yeah. Keep taking keep taking shots, keep yeah. taking risks, you know, and uh, keep doing what you love, bro. Just yeah. never give up. That's the only way that you'll truly fail. Never give up. Continue to believe in yourself every day. Keep building that mindset muscle. Because that's the thing that's going to help you to overcome all the adversity and all the doubt that seeps in or, or, the, or the, the doubt that seeps in from like your friends or family or externally. Like they'll one day just be asking me how you did it like they did with yeah. me, man. I had a lot of haters my whole life. I had a lot of doubters my whole life. Now they're asking me how I did it, you know, and that's because I just stayed focused. I continued to believe in myself. I continued to take action. Mm-hmm. And trust me, man, I've made more mistakes than you can ever imagine. People don't remember that, though. They remember my exit for $50 million. They remember I built a $10 million company by 24. They That's remember true. the wins, right? They remember now the influence yeah. I've created around the world. They don't, yeah. They've never seen all those moments of me shooting in the gym, all the failures I've had, all the mistakes I've had. So just yeah. keep on hustling, man. Keep believing in yourself and keep following your heart. Yeah. Keep following your heart, man. Trust your intuition. And surround yourself with the people that inspire you, whether that's your team, your friends, the mentors in your life, the people that inspire you and, and empower you, all right? Okay, man, thank you so much. That, that was super helpful. Because within, within everything going around, I did fall a little down, but just like I'm finally picking myself up again and making it work. And now I'm finally feeling myself again after through this couple of ma- months. But yeah, man, that definitely helps out. And I'm going to keep that in mind throughout this next couple of weeks. No doubt, bro. Well, listen, man, keep doing you. Keep crushing it. I believe in you, man. So just keep keep hustling, bro. You know, ultimately, just just don't give up. Thank you. That's it. Just keep pushing forward. Keep being creative. Remember, you're one of one. There's no one in the world. You're one of one, bro. So just tap in, man. Tap in. And... um, Appreciate you being a part of the 333 Tribe, man. I'll talk to you later, all right? Thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. I, I do look up to you, man. So th- this, this is a huge deal for me. You have no, no idea. Doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. Take a screenshot. I will. I will. Let me get it right now. Ready? One, two, three. Got it. Fire, man. Well, yeah, man. All right, brother. Blessings, man. Be the leader, all right? All right. Awesome, man. P- appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so I'm going to take a couple more questions here, and uh, let's go. First question, what's your biggest advice for someone who's building a personal brand? Do me a favor, guys. If you're looking to build your personal brand, drop a one. If you fear building a personal brand, give me a two. Drop a one if you're building a personal brand. Drop a two if you have some kind of concern, worry, fear of building your personal brand so you you don't want to or you think it's bad or something that's holding you back you have a block i want to see how many of you okay i got some ones dope ones amazing okay i got a couple twos so there's a little bit of fear something blocking you wow okay oh i see child hunger in here what's going on so good to see you i got some ones twos okay so first of all whether you're one or a two what i will say to you is that personally building my personal brand has been one of the greatest decisions that I've ever made. Because here's the thing, building a personal brand, not only does it give you an asset, 
that you will have for the rest of your life, right? Like it's, it's you. So it's like betting on yourself. The truth of the matter is this, it's about impact. It's about impact. And when you realize that your story, God gave you your story, your adversity that you've been through in your life, it's only you. No one's walked in your shoes. All the adversity, all the challenges, a lot of the stuff that you probably think no one would even care about. I'm telling you right now, there's someone out there that when you start to be vulnerable and share that with the world, you're going to touch a lot of hearts and you're going to change lives. And I think all of us have the opportunity to do that. All of us, our stories matter. So on one end, it creates significant impact in the world. And our generation and future generations need leaders right now that are authentic. So my number one advice is tap into your authenticity, knowing that you are unique and that your story is one of one. And the moment that you use storytelling as a modality, once you start sharing your most vulnerable pain, adversity, failures, you know, uh, uh, things that are, that are holding you back, it, it, uh, it really creates connection. And ultimately, it heals. It heals you because now those things no longer have power over you. And the other person who will hear it will actually get inspired, know that they're not alone. They're going through it too. And it'll help to heal their anxiety, depression, fear, doubt, all the things that we all go through because we're all human beings, all right? So that's first. Second, a personal brand is literally a business now. It's no longer about just looking cool, getting likes, getting comments, getting followers. I have turned my personal brand into a multi-million dollar business, the business of Gerard Adams. So not only does it change lives and create impact, but it creates income, right? And I don't know about you guys, but drop an emoji Drop an emoji, let's say drop some, drop some hearts or drop some, some money emojis if you want to create more financial freedom in your life. That's okay. It's okay to make an, want to make an impact in the world, want to change people's lives and make money, get rich, like have a wealthy life. You know, that's okay. As long as you're not doing it because you want to use that money for external things, external power to show off but more because that money is a tool, it's energy that's gonna allow you not only to have more fulfillment in your life and live abundantly, I, I, want, I, want, the, I want it all, I wanna live on the water, I wanna have all the abundance, but it also is gonna then allow that energy to overflow into your business, to create more impact, to launch more initiatives that the world needs because the world right now has so many problems. We all need to when the, create more wealth in our lives there's, there's so much wealth that's now being redistributed after COVID. And the more that impact driven personal brands and thought leaders now start to get to, to, uh, to have that money flow through us, the more impact and the more problems we're going to solve that the world actually truly needs. All right. So your personal brand is a huge gateway for you to be able to use that influence to make more income in whether it's your startup, whether it's your agency whether it's in your coaching business. For me, I even get paid, paid brand endorsements now. Like who would have thought that an entrepreneur from Jersey, a small town kid that's Latino, would have gotten deals from Toyota and Sprint and, you know, um, God, I mean, so many different companies I've been able to work with that have paid me thousands and thousands of dollars. So trust me, it's all about getting out of your own way, being authentic, knowing your story matters knowing that it's bigger than you. It's about impact. It's about healing yourself, healing others, and knowing that it's business. It is actually a business of you, dot inc. So go all in and bet on you, all right? Let's see, what other questions you guys have? What's your biggest challenge with being authentic? My biggest challenge with being authentic is, or I would say not is, because now there's a point in my life now where I just, I just am Gerard Adams. Like there's no filter anymore. And that took time. So what was my biggest challenge, I think was, I, for me, I feel like it was this imposter syndrome, like which played into comparison, which really at the root of it was self-worth. I would look at guys like Gary Vaynerchuk. I would look at guys like Tony Robbins. And I'd be like, why Gerard Adams? I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not Gary Vaynerchuk. 
how these guys, how did they, they their, their, their stories, who they are, their success is so much more like, why me? And I would get stuck thinking I needed to be like Tony Robbins or be like Gary Vee. And eventually I realized one day I was on stage with Eric Thomas and someone from the audience came over to me and go, yo, G, you don't got to be like E.T. You don't got to be like Gary Vee. Just be Gerard. Just be G. Just talk like G. Just be G. We love G. And that moment changed my life because I was like, you know what? That's true. I'm just going to be G. The same kid that grew up from Jersey, that has a little bit of slang, has a little bit of edge to me. You know what I mean? But ultimately, I speak from the heart. And the moment that you can accept yourself and know that you are enough and that you are different and unique and own it and own who you are, own your list, own your look, own your swag, own the fact that you're not perfect. That's what makes you freaking cool is that you're imperfect. So share your scars, share all those sides of you. So that's been huge for me. Um, so let's go with some next questions. How do you find investors for your ideas? Here's the best advantage answer I'll give you. Don't go and pitch investors on ideas, okay? Do not pitch investors on ideas. I no longer invest in ideas. Go and pitch and get investors by showing them that you did the work. Show them results. Show them data. Show them something tangible that they can touch, feel, see, play with, whatever it is, if it's an app, and a, a service that you're creating, a technology, whatever that is, show them it. Show them that you're doing the work because investors don't bet on ideas. Investors bet on leaders, leaders that can build a team, leaders that can overcome adversity, leaders that have a vision and that attack that vision relentlessly, leaders that have character to overcome all the hardships that come with the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Leader, they bet on leaders. So that's what I would tell you. Don't bet on ideas. Forget getting invested for your idea. Go and execute. Next question. Uh, all right, here we go. How to come back from failures. How to come back from failures is to learn from them and to realize they're gifts. You learn way more from failures than you do success. Way more. Every time I have had a failure, I learned so much. I got so much wisdom that it set me up for greater success the next time around. So I, the thing that I would tell you is there's no coming back. There's only moving forward. So change your mentality of having to come back as if you lost and look at it as like a gift that you learned and it's wisdom and really sit with and say to yourself, what did I learn from this experience? And how, could, how did this not happen to me, but how did this failure happened for me so that I can really grow as a leader and as an entrepreneur. Then take those lessons and don't come back, but move forward, elevate, accelerate, innovate. And that's how you will overcome your failures. Trust me, I've had to overcome tons of them, but I've only moved forward, but I didn't make the same mistakes twice. I always learned and pushed forward. All right. What else we got? Should I ever worry, think or worry about competition? This is a really dope question. I think a lot of people, do me a favor, guys. If you struggle with competition, do me a favor and drop a one. If you embrace and love competition, give me a two. One, you don't like comp you don't want to be in competition. Don't like competition. Two, you love competition. You're a competitor. I want to see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got? We got some competitors in here. We got people who don't, don't really compete. I don't want to compete. I'm good. Got some two competitors, two competitors. All right, what else, what else? We got two competitors. Oh, wow, we got some dope competitors in here. I love it, two competitors. One and two, don't want to compete, but I somewhat like to compete. One foot in, one foot out. One, I like the vulnerability. Thank you, Gagan. Doesn't like to compete. Two, got some competitors. One, don't like to compete. Two, we got some competitors. I love it, competitors, competitors. Collaboration, I like that, I like that. One, one, okay, cool, so we got some one. So here's what I would tell you guys. Embrace competition. Embrace competition. And yes, I know you've heard all the cliche things of you're only in competition with yourself. But what I will tell you is this. Michael Jordan, Steve Jobs, Oprah, they, these people love The Rock. 
They love competition. You ever see The Rock and Kevin Hart, how they compete with each other? Here's the thing. Competition doesn't mean that you want someone else to lose. It doesn't need to be this negative thing that's bad. Competition could be something that just you that drives you that, yeah, of course, it, it's about you becoming the best version of yourself. But here's the thing. When you do compete, not because you want to tear anyone else down, but because you will use that energy to reach higher levels for yourself. And the thing is that when you compete, sometimes you'll lose. I know that there's been times in my life playing sports that I never, I didn't, I didn't get first place. But I know, but because I competed, because I actually played the game, I actually showed up more powerfully than I would have, would have if I didn't compete. If I sat on the bench fearing competition. So what I tell you guys is some of you out here are playing this game wrong by cheering everybody else on that are out here competing, wanting to see others to win, or sitting back and doing even worse, which is hoping other people will lose, instead of getting in the game and competing. And ultimately knowing that it's, it's only at the end of the day, it truly is about you competing with yourself and becoming the best version of yourself. But by, by, by looking at competition, it will drive you to play harder, to play to win, but just know that ultimately we're all playing the same game. And that's to make the world a better place. That's to ultimately give back to the world, to create real solutions to problems that people are facing right now that need us, that need us entrepreneurs, that need leaders. So we're all in it together ultimately, but you got to have a little bit of a competitive spirit, all right? So tap into that. Don't think it's wrong to be competitive. Let's see, what else? What other questions? You guys got some great questions. Is waking up early in the morning a good thing? Absolutely it is. A lot of you all sleeping on your dreams. You got to get up. You got to have a morning routine. You got to have a morning ritual. See, my girlfriend taught me something, that in the morning, she has something she calls MMT. MMT means your morning magic time. Find your morning magic time. That's the time when everyone else is sleeping on their dreams. You wake up and there's this beautiful time that you get into your brain waves going to a theta state where you're able to really connect to spirit. You know, we all have that spirit, that God within us, right? That, that source, that, that intuition, that voice, right? And that voice is very clear in the morning where your morning magic time. And that's the time where you get to write. That's the time where you get to meditate and pray. That's the time where you get to read. And that's the time most that you're going to really accelerate and get momentum. And momentum is so important when you're a leader and you're building a business and you're an entrepreneur. You've got to get momentum. My man Charlie talks about getting a winning streak, a winning streak. Shout out to all my Charlie fans out here. Winning streak, right? Because he knows that there's power in action. There's power in energy. There's power in momentum. So you get momentum by getting up early and executing, all right? You guys got some great questions. We've been going at, at it. So let's go. Let's go. Who else got a good question? Here we go. How was your experience learning from Ryan Blair? And what could you say something that has stayed with you? Ryan Blair, guys, if you don't know, has been one of my greatest mentors. He wrote a book called Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain. Guys, comment it for me. I want everybody who has not read that book to get the book right after this live, nothing to lose, everything to gain. He went from gang member to multimillionaire. I was in a gang, so I related to Ryan. And I would say one of the greatest things that Ryan has taught me, wow, there's so much. But you know, one of the things that he says to me is that money doesn't lead, it follows. Money doesn't lead, it follows. Now, what does that mean? See, most of my early career as an entrepreneur, it's been 18 years, I chased the money. How many of you being honest chase the money? Comment in one if you're chasing money right now. Comment in two if you're not chasing the money, right? You feel that you're chasing, maybe it's impact, right? Maybe it's, it's being able to change people's lives. Comment in one or a two. And it's okay, be honest. Because in early in my career, I went after the money. And when I, when I, what I realized is that when you have to go after truly going and creating something that's going to make an impact, that's going to help people, that's going to help and really, truly help to transform people's lives. Give them a product, a service, or technology that makes their lives easier. Maybe makes them laugh or gives them an ability to accomplish a goal. Whatever that product is, right? That is going to create convenience and relief and peace and harmony or more love, more, more results in their life. When you really focus on those aspects, money follows, right? Because you're now focusing on value creating real world value. And when you do that, like Jeff Bezos did for Amazon, 
right? All of a sudden you can create a billion dollar company. And I know someone on here, one of you, 60 of you is going to be a billionaire. Which one is going to be it? If you're going to be the first millionaire in your family, comment, I'm going to be a millionaire. If you're going to be the first billionaire in your family, comment, I'm going to be a billionaire. I want to see who are my millionaires and billionaires that are in this live right now. And let me get the next question. Oh, I like it. I got some millionaires in here. I love it. I love it. So guys, what I would say to you is tonight, I want you to say, I want you guys to start saying to yourself, I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. See, I got a billionaire mindset. I don't, I, I'm, I'm already showing up every day as a billionaire so that I, therefore I'm creating that as my reality so I can create that in my life, right? I do, see a lot of y'all want to be millionaires and billionaires, but you're not willing to do what millionaires and billionaires actually do. So start thinking about how you're showing up. How are you waking up in the morning? How are you doing your routine, your rituals? How are, how are you being productive and time blocking? How are you treating others? How are you leading? Right? Are you are you being that millionaire or billionaire now? That's how you create a million or billion dollars. All right. Now, oh man, my favorite, Raul. I am a conscious billionaire. Let's go, my man. I love it. So I got a question here. Much respect, thanks, brother. Respect to you too. Comment your questions in the box. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ten more minutes, guys, and then I gotta jump. I gotta call for my mastermind. For those of you that are excited about working with me and being part of my tribe and my conscious community of entrepreneurs that are thriving and leveling up, I got something special for you. If you were interested in learning about my mastermind, DM me the word mastermind, or just stay tuned. I got a really dope announcement coming soon. So guys, just be prepared for that. Make sure my post notifications are on. So here's the question. How to align what you feel with what you think? This is something that I was working on with one of my coaches today. Guys, it's, it's so important for you to have a mentor and coach in your life. All the biggest, I don't care who you are, have had great coaches. So my coach today was talking to me, and it comes down to this. you got to learn to feel into your heart. So for me, how do I, do I align with that? I pause. I've created a boundary where before I make a decision, any decision, I pause and I get out of my head and I drop to my heart through my breath. I breathe. I really say to myself, Gerard, what do you want? What do you want, bro? How do you want to serve? And I get, and I ask myself this question and I feel into my heart. I feel, feel into my gut, into my soul. And then you got to trust yourself. It comes down to trusting that intuition, trusting that feeling from here. Your gut intelligence is way stronger, way more intelligent than your ego and your mind. So your ego and your mind is always going to tell you why you shouldn't do something, why you should be in fear. It's always going to try to protect you. But here, when you feel and you drop from your head to your heart, to your intelligence and your soul, I guarantee you, if you start to learn to trust that 100% and take action from there, from a place of love, from a place of compassion, from a place of fire, from a place of trusting yourself, I guarantee you, you will start to attract the right opportunities, the right people into your life. Because this already knows spirit, source, this is meant to protect us, source. So drop, drop from your head to your heart through your breath, through pause, pausing. Take a breath. Ask yourself, what do I really want? How does this make me feel? How do I want to serve? How do I want to show up? Is this aligned with my values? Ask yourself those questions and then decide from that place of certainty, of poise, right? And then channel it, boom. Make your decision. Take action. Don't think twice. Don't go back into fear of consciousness. Stay into that consciousness, right? What other questions? Great questions, guys. I'm going to take one more here. One more question. What are, my, what are you currently reading? So, guys, I'm going to make this question for all of us. Comment what is the book that you're reading that you recommend. The book that I'm currently reading right now is called The War of Art. The War of Art. And what it's teaching me is about an amazing, amazing term that causes us, so much of us, to step back into fear. And it's called resistance. It's this word resistance. So the War of Art talks about resistance and how resistance plays a major role in our lives. And when you're able to identify that resistance in your body, in your life, every day as you make decisions and you start to realize that resistance, 
and realizing that on the other side of that resistance is your growth. And you start leaning into the resistance where that is that resistance in your life, whether it's going up to that girl in the, you know, at the party or whether it's, you know, the resistance of raising your hand in school, whether it's the resistance of quitting that job and going after your dreams as an entrepreneur. Maybe it's the resistance of, uh, you know, making a big decision in your life, right? Whatever that resistance is on the other side of it is growth. So the war of art, all right? So think and grow rich. I love it. Um, let's see, the 5 a.m. club. I love it. Unlock yourself. Great. What else we got? Purple cow. Another really great one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The heart is a thousand times more powerful than our brains for sure. D Dominique's in here. What's good? If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.